Corey Connors was a part of this story. He was maybe the story for three days of the PGA Championship. Shot 75 on the on uh, Sunday and f- really fell out of contention and disappeared from television for the final round. But I've watched a fair bit. I guess we've all watched a fair bit of Corey Connors play the last while because he's been in contention, you know, more than a few times. Right. This is a guy who hits it so straight. His his driver is as probably I I think as good as anybody's in terms of accuracy, and his iron play is it can be exceptional. His punting comes and goes. Um, this was a golf course, Oak Hill, where driving the ball accurately was maybe more important than almost any golf course I've ever seen. And I suspect that's why he was uh, at or near the top. He has contended in a few majors. He's won twice on the PGA Tour. Is he approaching like his best time right now? Is this one of the top? Is this one of the top players on the PGA Tour right now? Uh, yeah. Let me jump in there. Go ahead, Lego. Yeah, go, go ahead, go. go ahead. Okay. So he's continuing, and you're absolutely right, Bob. His ability to drive, particularly his driving ability, is so strong. It's so straight, which sets him up beautifully for U.S. Open type. And and the, the PGA this past week was more U.S. Open-like than, than ever before. His ascent that he's making is really, really impressive. And he's starting to get more and more comfortable when he's in the breach so we watched him handle Thursday, sorry, for Saturday's third round. He did an excellent job, other than that bad shot in the bunker that, where he buried it. He held that situation, and that is tough to do. But what he has to continue, to, he's on pace to learn and get that level of comfort when he's in the breach of a major. He has to get to a point, and he's moving rapidly in that direction to being able to perform when you've got the lead on both right. Saturday and Sunday to get to the ability to have the lead when the, when you run out of holes and literally the last few holes in a major championship. So he's moving in this direction. He's learning like Brooks did from last major, the Masters, to this major, the PGA. Corey Connors is on a fantastic track to move it in down the line so he can win major championships. He's right on track. Like, what do you think? Yeah, I, well, I'm exactly. I think exactly what Soak said. I, I think that he's learning, you know, by his mistakes, and and more right. so than that, I think it's just understanding how you personally feel inside, mentally, the nerves and everything, and how you deal with that. Um, and the more you you know, sort of get in, put yourself in that position, the more comfortable, if you want to call it, right. that you get. And let's be clear about it. I don't care if you're Tiger Woods, Brooks Kepka, or Corey Connors or Ian Leggett, Richard Zoko. We know what it feels like when you've got a chance to win. It is not comfortable, mm-hmm. you know, because this is not really your expectations go up. And, you know, there's a lot of things that can run through your mind. And I think that it's just how you deal with that. And the more you put yourself in that position, the more comfortable you get. And, more, more so than that with someone like Corey Connors, who I've known for quite some time, it's just the pure belief in himself. Um, and I think that this kind of, you know, Zoke and I have talked about this a lot about Canadian mentality. And um, I think it's just it, he has to believe that he genuinely is one of the best players in the world. And he deserves to win major championships. He deserves it because he's a great player. He deserves it because he works hard. And I think that between, you know, his belief in himself and, you know, putting himself in those positions more and more often, I I think it's inevitable. He's eventually going to get one. And, and, you know, it's all about putting for him. It's really genuinely all about putting for him. So, Ian, 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 what would what would have Saturday night, Sunday morning been for Corey as he knows that he's in the second last group? What 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 would, what would the the mental state he be would he be in over that twenty hour period? Yeah, well, you know, at the U.S. Open at Olympia Fields, I was in fifth place going into the last round. You know what the hardest part of the thing was, other than you know being awake most of the night thinking I'm going to win the U.S. Open, was how late I teed off, 
and it got me out of my rhythm. On the PGA Tour, when right. you tee off in the last group, you're teeing off at 12.30, 1 o'clock. I was teeing off at 2.40 or something. And yeah, that my you whole out. schedule. And plus, <laughs> never mind, I'm awake at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> so, um, you know, just being in those positions and understanding how to manage yourself, um, sure. I think, is a big, big deal. And finding a good routine that gets you to that period where you go through your warm up properly and your mind isn't, uh, you know, taking over um, your preparation. So I think a lot of that has a, an enormous amount to right. deal with, to do with it. And the more often he gets in that position and right. at the British open, it's even worse. Right? I mean, you're teeing yeah. off even later. Four. So I think that, uh, you know, all these things are part and parcel of being a tour player and understanding how you deal with them. Sleep yes. is overrated, Richard, on Saturday night? Uh, well, the more comfortable you're in that situation, the better sleep you're going to have. That's <laughs> that's the that's the way it comes down to. And we can look at Tom Watson. We can look at Nick Faldo. Just look at Mike Weir. When he was in that final group at Medina playing with Tiger, he shot 79. That's being in the breach. He learned from that situation. So when he got to 2003 on the back nine at uh, the Masters, how he performed – even up until that last five foot putt on the 18th hole that he had to make to get in the playoff, he felt comfortable enough and to be able to perform. Corey's on that track and he's going to learn. I think with what has happened yeah. in his play on Saturday and Sunday, he's going to look at himself today and go, you know what? I'm, I have gotten this close. I can do this and talking exactly what Legos talked about. His belief system is only going to get stronger. And he's, he knows in himself now that he can get this job done. Well, let's talk about that bunker shot, the fairway bunker shot that, uh, you know, went under the lip. I mean, that wasn't just a bad shot. That was a horrible shot. Was it not? I mean, uh, you know, if yeah, it that doesn't was quickly, yeah. that was quickly repeated by Victor. Hovland about yeah. four, four hours later. So maybe. Yeah. So but maybe we, we're we underestimating. Uh, we could be underestimating how difficult that shot actually was. I mean, you got maybe two true. of the best players in the world hit the identical same shot. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. that's <laughs> it's very unusual. Like, like it. I think they said that uh, Corey had a nine iron out of there. If that's yeah. the case, he didn't get that. Like, wow, that's a bad shot. Yeah, it was a, a bad, bad shot. shot. It was and a then horrible with, shot. Uh, yeah, it, it, okay, that happens, and um, you know, um, no, when really, Hovland we don't expect it, we don't expect tour players to essentially roll the ball, you no, know, well, and, out mean, of anywhere, and that's some, really what happened. Is, yeah, I was going to say that was a Shannon shot, boys. That wasn't that wasn't Corey Connors. That was John Shannon. Well, exactly. It was you know, fifteen <laughs> handicapper hits that kind of shot. Wow. You know, I haven't played there. I haven't played there since the redesign, but I think we're underestimating probably the face of that so. bunker, yeah. how how steep it actually was. So, and when you look there's at just no possibility that two guys, and by the way, two high ball hitters in right. Victor Hovland right. and Corey Connor, these are not low ball guys that both hit the identical same shot. Yeah. I think that we've got to put some degree degree of difficulty on the shot rather than mostly just the. Pure I, I grant you all that. You know, I know it wasn't an easy shot. But guess what? He hit it one inch off the ground. <laughs> you know? It happens. Must have been a hard shot. <laughs>